Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be looking at the plant behind me, a very interesting plant that provides us with a delicious stir fry vegetable and edible seeds that are high in protein and oil. And they also provide a fiber for basketry. It's a pretty interesting plant. It's right behind me. It's called Devil's Claw. So let's check it out. In this lesson, we're gonna be looking at two different species of Devil's Claw. There's only two that grow in our region. And the first one I have here is called Proboscidea, I think that's how to pronounce it, Parvaflora. So let's look at how to identify it. Okay, so here we have the Devil's Claw plant, a very distinct plant. It's about knee high. It's an annual herb. So this species of devil's claw, the Proboscidea parvaflora, has a one year life cycle. So first, before we talk about anything, let's look at its habitat. Okay, we're on today what you might call a floodplain, a little area where the wash probably uh, overflows to when it's really, really wet. This is gonna get a little bit of extra moisture than the surrounding desert, okay? So it's not gonna be growing up on hillsides. It's gonna be growing down low in areas that get seasonal flooding, okay? The next thing you're gonna notice about this plant is it's big leaves that usually are covered in little gnats and insects because this is a sticky plant. Okay, so devil's claw leaves are sticky and you can see the general shape there, uh, somewhat heart shaped a little bit, okay? Here's a bigger one. They get pretty big as you can see, really sticky, big leaves. And what I really love about this plant that really just struck me the first time I saw it is the stems. The stems of this plant, the camera, just do not do it justice. Well, right now, this one's kind of all covered in like bugs and stuff, but sometimes this will just gleam in the sunlight and it's this really beautiful, I mean, look at how thick this bad boy is. This is an annual plant, one year of growth here. Look at that, huge. Okay, which brings us to the next thing is these super distinct seed pods. And we're gonna talk all about these. Okay, really distinct. And this plant's just covered in them. They're all, they all are all hairy and they have like a, what we would call in botany, glandular hairs, which means they all have sort of like a little, a little uh, dew drop at the tip of it. So when you rub these uh, fruit, they're like wet. Okay, and this plant also has a really distinct smell. I'm kidding you not. To me, this plant smells just like fish. I can smell it and, well, maybe not always. Sometimes it smells like fish, sometimes it just, it definitely has a foul odor to it, you would call it. That's why I ignored this plant for so long because I heard about people eating it, but I was like, gross. You know, the smell just totally put me off to it. But once you actually try it, once you actually uh, cook it, um, that fish flavor is gonna be completely gone. There's not gonna be anything uh, nasty about it. So uh, it, will, <laughs> it will throw you off when you first find it. But man, look at this thing. Absolutely loaded with these fruit. I mean, it's almost weighing the plant down. There's so many of them. Look at that. So let's look at the flowers next of this species then we're going to look at the next species which is a, a the desert devil's claw and these plants i don't know if i mentioned are also known as unicorn plants okay they're also called unicorn plants and we're going to show you how to differentiate the two species right here okay here is the a flower of the unicorn plant and sometimes people in this region will separate it between the purple unicorn plant or devil's claw and the yellow devil's claw. So this is Proboscidea parvaflora, the annual uh, species. Oh, and we have a bee trying to pollinate it right now as we speak. And so this species is sometimes gonna have like pale uh, cream colored uh, flowers, but they're usually gonna be purple or lavender. And you can see that throat in there is yellow and that bee's taken off. So we can obviously see these must be bee pollinated. <laughs> you saw it here first, all right? And so the throat of this flower, oh, sorry, this grass is getting in the way. The throat of this flower is usually gonna be yellow, but for the most part, it's not gonna have any yellow. And then that bee is coming back for it. Round two. Okay, maybe not. Anyway, let's go look at the other species before we talk about the uses, just so from the very outset, you know how to differentiate the two species in our region. Okay, here we have the second species that grows in our region, the desert unicorn plant, or the desert devil's claw, which is Proboscidea altheifolia. Altheifolia, okay? And this is a perennial plant, which means it comes back year to year, okay? It, it, the top part of it is gonna die back, but then the bottom, the root is gonna stay alive. And this actually has a big 
a tuberous root, or I don't know if it's considered a tuber botanically speaking, but it's a really, really big, uh, thick root, okay, which I don't know if the other species has that. I don't think it does, but I've never dug one up to check. And so the way you identify this species, the leaves are a lot smaller in general. Okay, so you'll see leaves this size uh, on the, on the uh, Parvaflora species, but, you know, they're not going to get much bigger than about this on the Althea folia. Okay, and the flowers are how you really tell the difference. We saw that there was a little bit of yellow on the purple devil's claw. Well, people call this the yellow devil's claw, and it's all the way yellow, and it'll have little copper-colored uh, specks on it. Oops, I pulled the flower all the way off. Didn't mean to do that, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and take a look at it. So there you go, really beautiful shrieks there. Uh, looks like five petal flowers, okay, bilateral symmetry with the largest petal on the bottom, that's typical. And we have all those copper colored spots and those streaks. So fully yellow, um, no really lavender tinge. And sometimes I think these are copper colored, okay, or rust colored a little bit. And you can actually kind of see that here on the outside. This flower has started to uh, kind of die and finish its flowering, it looks like. And so the outside of those on the is gonna be sort of copper colored. Okay, and you can see it has that elegant stem. This one looks a little bit hairier, but it does have that beautiful, elegant color to it that really you can only appreciate uh, if you're seeing it up close. Also very sticky. Let's see how these smell. Oh, wow. These don't smell anything like the other one. That almost has a perfume type of smell to it. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm tricked now because the, the, the stickiness from the other one still on my hands <laughs> okay it was the flower that's what smells like delicious perfume Whew. this flower is like one of the best smelling flowers in the whole plant kingdom that I've ever smelled <laughs> okay what you do notice with this species maybe not in this particular plant but what you'll notice is that these leaves are uh, sometimes very glossy really glossy they almost have like a shine to them you can almost see that a little bit but uh the parvoflora or sorry the althea folia the desert or yellow devil's claw is going to be usually glossy leaves okay so let's compare the two really quick the uh purple devil's claw proboscidea parvoflora is an annual plant it grows upright it has large leaves with purple flowers. The desert devil's claw or yellow devil's claw has smaller leaves, okay? Uh, let's see, Proboscidea althea folia, smaller leaves. It has yellow flowers and it actually spreads along the ground. It doesn't grow upright. It tends to spread along the ground. And I'm gonna show you a little bit more of that characteristic in a moment. It doesn't get nearly as big as the purple devil's claw. And it has glossy leaves, did I say that? Nice glossy leaves. Okay, so now that we've identified the two, let's take a, a look, uh, another look at the Desert Devil's Claw. There's one here, one here, maybe like about five or six of them all together. And you can see when they mature, they're all spread along the ground. Let me put my foot in there for reference. So they're all like flat along the ground. And Looks like here, this uh, fruit here has sort of a little dorsal fin on it. Okay, you see that little fin right here my finger is? Okay. Fruit about the same. I think the Parvaflora species gets a little bit bigger. And it's actually a lot more well known as being used for food. And here's what the mature seed pods look like. Okay, here's a really good one here. Look at that. I know you've probably seen that in artwork of the Sonoran Desert, probably never knew what it was. In fact, at Boyce Thompson Arboretum, there's a huge metal sculpture of one of these devil claw pods right when you're walking in. So maybe next time you go there, pay attention to that, but that's what that is if you never knew. Okay, devil's claw. You can see that beautiful stem shining in the sunlight. So this is the desert devil's claw, the yellow flower species. Okay, so now that we've really hit home with how to identify it, went really into detail. Let's look at actually how to use the plant. We're gonna go back to the purple devil's claw and I'm gonna show you how to 
tell if the fruit are ready. So here's what we're gonna be eating on this plant. And both of them pretty much the same as far as edibility is concerned. It's the young, immature fruit. Okay, we're gonna, but if they get hard, I'll show you, then it's too late. And the seeds. So it's either the young, immature fruit, or if you're too late, then you'll have to wait until they um, fully ripen up and then they'll split open like I just showed. Then you can extract the seeds once, they, once they've split open. Okay, so on this plant, we're gonna have fruit that are uh, too late and fruit that are just right. Actually, some are a little too early. So we have here some young fruit that I'll probably just leave to mature. Actually, these are nice, super, super soft. Okay, nice and squishy. Then we have this one here which is firm, too firm. And you might have to cut a couple open to learn the difference, but once it starts to mature, pretty quickly it's gonna get hard and woody on the inside. Okay, so we're gonna squeeze, and usually the ones that are found higher up on the plant, like these ones here. Um, oh yeah, these are perfect. So if they're squishy, you can still use it. So you want it to be pretty much full size or almost full size like this size here, and I can smell that fish as I'm talking, that fishy smell. So you want it to be about this size and still be able to squish it, okay? We have a whole lot down here that, uh, well, these ones, these ones might be right on the verge. I'm probably gonna leave them. Yeah, these are too hard here down lower. Okay, we're pretty much past the season at this point. So I'm gonna be looking at the ends of the plants, okay? The furthest ends of the plants, those are going to be where all of the, the ones that are nice and immature are, okay? And you can still see the way this plant is, the, there's still some flowering and maybe, who knows, maybe even more will produce, if we get, especially if we get more rain. So I'm going to be picking these, and you can actually eat these uh, raw, sort of, the skin is so bitter, okay? Let me show you that real quick. Okay, so technically these are edible raw, um, the, like I said, the skin's bitter, so what you're going to want to do you're gonna to wanna to bust off this end here. And this is sort of wasting it, so you really only wanna do this when you're in the field. Maybe you're just taking like a handful on your way by in an area where there's a lot of them and then you just move on. Um, but, it, but if you're gonna take them home, then you wouldn't wanna do this because you're wasting a lot of the, the flesh. But the part you eat, and you can eat all this flesh, it just doesn't separate from the skin without like a potato peeler, um, which obviously you're not gonna have. And I just dropped that, so now it has dirt all over it because it's so sticky, but that's okay. We're gonna get the inside anyway. So as I break that open, there's a bunch of seeds in there. And without getting a mouthful of dirt, I'm gonna Well, I got a little bit of dirt. But you can eat the seeds from the inside. And the seeds are totally a, a non-bitter flavor. Okay. Well, now I'm getting the dirt. But you get the point. So you can dig the seeds out with your teeth and then toss the rest, okay? But we're not gonna do that. We're gonna get a bunch of these nice immature ones. We're gonna take them home and we're gonna boil them in one change of water and then we're gonna fry them and that's gonna get rid of the bitter flavor, okay? So I'm gonna do that, but while we're out here in the field, I'm gonna show you how we extract the seeds and the seeds of this species are not ready but we're gonna go back to the desert devil's claw, the yellow de devil's claw, and we're gonna grab some of the seeds. And I think this species, the purple species, has a little bit bigger fruits, so you'll probably be able to get more seeds out of this one, but we're gonna, for the sake of a demonstration for the video, um, the, the Althea folia, yellow flower species, uh, ripens first, okay? Or at least this year in this location, it ripened first. So we're gonna grab those. Uh, for a demonstration on what to do with the seeds. Let's check it out. Okay, so for the seeds, we're gonna grab some of these mature uh, seed pods, which you'll need a knife to do. This is a very fibrous plant, strong, stringy fibers. And these things are already wanting to hook onto me and they will dig right into your skin, no problem. So what we're gonna do is, and this is easier done in a kitchen once you've got some, 
uh, but you're going to split this open and you will see these weird looking grayish uh, lumpy kind of looking seeds will start to fall out okay there you go and we're going to take these home and i'll show you what we do with them they you can technically eat them raw but they're not really good raw they're like kind of chewy and mostly fibrous so uh let's take them home and this is pretty much the same exact thing you could do with the yellow desert claw, uh, devil's claw um but i do think the pods get a little bit bigger on the purple flower species than the yellow so um and of course there's a lot of seeds in here that you can't see that are behind these little sections so i'll show you um, what you can do to get those out as well. Okay, and here we can much more clearly see that characteristic of the glossy, shiny leaves of the Desert Devil's Claw, Proboscidea altheofolia. Okay? Real glossy. And uh, the other species, this doesn't really look glossy like that, not noticeably so. And of course, this is growing lower to the ground and it's gonna stay growing low to the ground. Okay, the last thing I wanted to show you before we hit the kitchen is just how big this Purple's Devil Claw, Proboscidea parviflora, can get. Okay, it's a huge plant for an annual. See that beautiful flower? And you can see those thick uh, stems down there. And this thing gets really big. It doesn't really get bigger than waist high, tall, but it does even start to spread out. It's like a gigantic version of the yellow flower species. And so standing in the middle of this, this is about waist high. And here's my boot for size reference at just how large the sand is. This sun is, I mean, this plant is sort of sun stressed. So you can see the leaves are all, the leaves are all, blah, blah, blah. leaves are all droopy and just the crazy number of little uh, gnats that uh, get on this plant. So those little black dots are all gnats, okay? And these huge fruit, you see the fruit do also get a lot bigger than the yellow flower species, which is why this species was actually cultivated, okay? And we'll talk about that at the end of this, and it may not be for the reason you think, okay? So there you go. I'm going to take some more from this uh, one plant here, and then back to the kitchen.